when you when you watch the quarterbacks now, I mean, it, it, it's like the whole position's changed all of a sudden because they're doing. It, there's no more hut hut on two or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten really sophisticated out there. Um, is is that just an illusion or is it a lot different to play that position now? I think the quarterbacks now the demands are are even more so than before. I mean, let's take for example Pey- Peyton Manning. I mean, we're we're talking about a guy who's who's coming up the. the getting everybody set and then all of a sudden changing plays with defense. I'm not saying that myself or Dan Marino or John Elway didn't change places because plays because we did have that opportunity. But the, the the name of the game now, and I think it's being taught in college more, is in is let's see what the defense is doing. Let's not let them dictate what we're doing. Let's dictate what what you know, what we're gonna do against what they're going to show us. So the defense have they're just making the defenses show their hands. Is that making it a tougher on the defense? Absolutely. And I think with that spread offense, especially in college, it's making teams show what defensive coverage. I mean, if I knew what defensive coverage I had before the play, every play, life would be pretty darn easy. And that's what they're trying to make it for. So in some sense, yeah, it's harder because it demands preparation, but I think kids are smarter. They get it, which is good. Um, but I think it's easier in the sense of you're not you're not getting so many surprises. You know what? I I mean I you got to go out there and do it on the field, obviously. But I swear, because of the video games now, okay. uh, these kids are they're just so much more sophisticated than say a generation back was. By the time they get to high school, they they actually know what's going on out there. Oh, they've had specialized coaching since eighth <laughs> grade. I mean, I mean, I mean, at the time when I was growing up, I lettered in four sports. You know, as soon as as soon as football was over, we were either wrestling or basketball, and then I was going to golf or or, or baseball. Nowadays, they're full time baseball or full time, and they've got their you know strength and conditioning coaches at seven. And, and parents parents know that that makes a difference. Um, like for example. I was on the golf team, and I it was probably a three or four handicap, but I could still be on the golf. Now, the golf, if you're on a golf team, if you're not shooting two under every time, you're you're off. So I mean, it's very specialized, and you can use any sport, but that's the demands we're putting on our kids for the plus and the minus. So, uh, what's the minuses? Do you think they not don't have as much fun? I don't think they're getting as well rounded. You know, everyone. I think everyone needs to have the ability to appreciate. You know. A volleyball game or a basketball game or you know and if you're saying hey you can't do that because you're gonna get hurt you're gonna do something to your arm because you're a pitcher or you I think you're really starting to limit some of life's experiences and and part of I think that you know God has us on earth for our experiences and I, I don't think they should be limited like that uh, my opinion only for well-rounded kids I don't think I would allow my kids to do that. I would encourage my kids to to um, do as much as they can play the piano uh, Play basketball, do sports, play some Nintendo, great, but not all day. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. Be a kid. I, I think we're kind of missing some of that. So life after football, pretty good for you, huh? It's good. I, I really enjoy what I do. I, I've always told my wife, it's like, I love playing football, but then never feel like work. I love uh, running my economics asset management business because I love economics. It doesn't feel like work. So uh, do I get paid? Yeah. Do I have fun? Yeah. And I like what I do. So I think that's, if I could encourage young people to pick out what do I want to be, and now it seems like they've got to be 12 years old and have to decide. Yeah, I know. You know, give yourself some time. Parents, lay off the kids, roll through it, and, you know, enjoy them while they're still a kid because it goes like that. What, what sport are you uh, active in now? I'm going to assume golf. I am active in golf. Uh-huh. I play a little bit of basketball. I am a referee really? for uh, some uh, soccer. Uh, yeah, I kind of gave up the coaching stuff. I was getting a little too intense, you know. <laughs> but, but I also uh, coach a flag football team for our uh, uh, fifth through eighth grade. So I just like to be involved. And the one thing I can do is if I can hand something down that I learn to even one kid every year, that's my goal. Last thing, you played the Jim Rome cut yeah. today, which which was it's like, like you know, I, I always wanted to, how you look back at that now, you know, it happened a long time ago. Oh, yeah. uh, how has your attitude about it changed from then as to now? How angry were you about it back then? And, uh, I, I mean, or were you? No, I mean, I think I was really emotional the first couple of weeks afterwards because it really pulled me out of my comfort zone. I'm really kind of laid back guy, really, until it gets to the competition. Um, they're pretty fierce, and my sister can attest to that. <laughs> but, but, you know, it was way out of my comfort zone. But then afterwards, 
I, I got such a ground well supportive. You know, Jim, you got to stand up. And, you know, we really, and that was the time I was going down to New Orleans, and it was a big change in my life, and I was very really much accepted. So what I looked at initially as something that was, I thought, devastating, turned around to be well, still a positive. And I, and I look at it as it today, at it today, as still a positive. And I encourage kids, not the physical part, I would never encourage that, but stay in your ground. Have some, have some backbone. If you believe in something, I don't care if it's politics or whatever it might be, stand up for yourself. Say something have and, and talked, be heard. Have you ever talked to him since? No, I haven't. Really? No. He's, so he's never reached out to you to maybe have you on the show? I mean, uh, No, never. Never. No, there was a chance. i got to th- say this. There was an opportunity that there was a, a uh, large hamburger chain that wanted to uh, use that video and I said sure great and it would have been a good six digit figure he mixed it really so you know I don't I don't I don't know what he harbors I don't harbor anything about so you know he mixed, I, he mixed me out of a six figure deal I should have knocked him down again man. <laughs> he's going down again <laughs> Thanks, I, know, man. I would I don't have any hard feelings I'd wish him the best if he's standing right here as uh, you know he's done extremely well for himself and with his type of I don't say I agree with his type of but, uh, you know, I'll speak my mind. I don't agree with all the stuff he says, but, um, you know, that's for his audience, not me.